This is Software 9 Dialer. Next we move to the Dialer tab. If you already have the UD1000 installed and have run the Learn function at the Fire Alarm Control Panel, when you open the Dialer tab you will see the Dialer programming options. Otherwise, click Add Dialer to access the Dialer programming options. Starting with the device name, the default is Dialer 1. You can change this, but the device name is only stored in the software. The device ID default is 1. This needs to match the DIP switch setting on the UD1000. Moving to Phone Line 1 and Phone Line 2. This is where we can adjust the settings for the phone lines that are provided by the phone company and connected to the UD1000. Your first option is enabled. The default is checked. When this box is checked, the jack on the UD1000 is active and can be used for communicating to a central station. If, for example, you are only using one phone line and you want to disable line 2, simply uncheck the box and line 2 will be disabled. Your next option is answering machine bypass. The default for this is unchecked. If the phone line is going to be shared with an answering machine or other device and remote access via that phone line is required, by checking the box, the UD1000 will answer the call in answering machine bypass mode. Remember when accessing the panel remotely via a modem to check the use answer machine bypass box. The next setting for the phone line is enable line monitor. The default is checked. When this box is checked, the UD1000 is monitoring the phone lines for 15 volts plus or minus 5 volts. If for some reason the connection that is being used does not have voltage on it, you can uncheck the box so the UD1000 will not monitor for voltage. The next setting is Disable Dial Tone Detection. The default is unchecked. When this is unchecked, when the UD1000 seizes the line, it looks for dial tone before transmitting the information to a central station. In the event that the UD1000 is connected to another system, for example a GSM device that is using dialer capture, that system may not generate a dial tone. In that case, you can check the box and the UD1000 will not look for a dial tone prior to sending the information. Next is the number of rings. If you plan on accessing the fire alarm control panel remotely via a modem, the number of rings refers to when the UD1000 will answer that call. Whomever provides the phone lines for the UD1000 will provide phone numbers that can be used to call into the fire alarm control panel. The default here is zero. If you want the UD1000 to answer the call, you will need to change this to something other than zero. For example, if I change this to two, that means that the UD1000 will answer the call after two rings when calling into phone line two. Line prefix is where you would add any numbers or characters needed to access an outside line by the UD1000. For example, entering nine and a comma would dial nine and then give you a one second pause. Moving now to the reporting method priority. Your options are primary and secondary. The default is primary. These panels have the ability to communicate via a dialer, which is what we're working on currently, the UD1000, and or I, the IP communicator. If you would like the UD1000 to back up the IP communicator, you would set this to secondary, and when we get to IP reporting, we would set that to primary. You can also have the IP back up the dialer by setting this to primary and the IP to secondary. Your other option is actually to set them both to primary, in which case, when there's an event on the panel, it'll actually send the signals via the dialer as well as the IP communicator. Moving now to the reporting accounts. There are five lines to set up reporting accounts. We're going to start with the first line and work through what these things are. First, decide which signals you want to have sent to Central Station. So, for example, we'll send the alarms, troubles, and supervisories. And then you need to decide how much information you want to send. Whether you want to send point information, which is going to give you all the specific information of the point that is in alarm. Zone information, which is going to give you the information of the zone that is in alarm, the zone number, and the event in the zone. Or just the panel information, so the event on the panel is all that you will get. The default is point. Central Station will give you an account number and you enter that here. The primary phone number. Central Station will give you a phone number that you need to enter here in which the UD1000 will dial when sending the information. So this is their phone number that they give you. We have two formats, contact ID or SIA. The default is contact ID. And test events. Do you want test events to be sent to, to Central Station? Go ahead and check this box. They will probably also give you a backup phone number to go to a different receiver. That would go under your secondary phone number. They may potentially give you a second account number. Chances are this is going to be the same as your primary.
Again, if this is a different receiver that you're going to, they may actually have you have a different format. Again, it's contact ID or SIA. And again, test events to that secondary receiver or not. So once you fill that information in, that will be going to your central station. Now, if you want information to go to multiple locations, so late, let's say you want it to go to a central station and to a security office on site, but you only want the alarms to go to that security office, you go down to the second line and you select, select alarms and then you can decide point, panel, or zone again. Uh, set up the account number for that particular your receiver you're going to and the phone number that you're going to call to that receiver. Uh, and then if there's a backup you can set up the secondary account number and the secondary phone number. Now what happens when there's an event on the fire panel, it will go to the first line and execute calling that phone number and sending the information. It will then move to the second line and call that number and send the information. And if you were to do three, four, and five, it would do the same thing. So you can send up to five different locations with the UD1000. For more information on the dialer, please refer to the installation manual. The next video in the series is IP reporting. For more information on programming, please refer to the installation manual and find other resources on our website, www.pottersignal.com.